Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Maya and in today's video I wanted to do a coloring update. I haven't done one in a while and some people really like this video so I'm excited because I like it too. It's fun. So uh, first thing here that you can see is a book that came in. It's a little dinked. I got it I guess secondhand because there aren't any. This is an older book. I saw it on Doodle Robots channel. And I really liked it. I fell in love with it. Um, and yeah, I'm obsessed. I already started a page. And um, yeah, I just wanted to tell you guys about that. So you'll see actually a page, hopefully, in my completed pages. That's the condition it came in, but that's okay. At least there aren't any colored pages. Okay, so I also got in yesterday the Flower Fairies book. I did get it used. And unfortunately, there is one colored page. Where is it? Oh, there's that. That's okay. The one, there's one that's a little worse. <laughs> Where is it? Oh, here. That one. So I'm going to have to cover that with acrylic or a gouache or something. So, but I think I can fix it. So, yeah. But I really like this book. And I actually have, for my kids, we have the Flower Fit by Cicely... Cicely Mary Barker, I believe, is the illustrator. Cicely Mary Barker, we have like the Flower Fairies books and there's like poems with illustrations and um, we've had those for a long time. They're, they're really awesome. So I love that. Now, um, I have, sorry, Cloud just came in. I haven't had a chance to show you the swatches for the new watercolors that I got. So from Blick, I got the olive green, sap green, and hooker's green. Now these are a little similar, but that's okay. Um, I do use a lot of greens. So those are the, and I, the only other colors, this is, these are the Cotman, Windsor Newton Cotman watercolors. And what I like is that they're very transparent. I had to take some out to fit the new ones. Um, but the only ones that I want are two more. There's a turquoise blue that I want and a beige. It's called like a, it's like a cream color. So that would be awesome. Other than that, I don't think I need any more. And I love them. They're very transparent. And so I use them as basing. And then with pencil, like polychromous, polychromous on top. So I wanted to show you those swatches because in my last, um, Hall, I didn't show them. Let's see. Okay. Also, I wanted to show the swatches for the ink tense box. And these are like a more opaque than the pencils. They're called ink tense blocks or sticks. And these are the swatches. I love them. The ones I had before were like tan, mustard, and saddle. Or, er, yeah. And then all the other ones are new that I got. So I, I love these so much. And I use them in my, um, in the page, um, where is it? The Romantic Country page that I loved so much. I use it in that um, page. Also, I used um, these, which are similar. The ink, the Derwent um, paint palette. And these are more of um, an India ink consistency than a watercolor consistency. So, I have that. And I wanted to show, well, I'll get back, I'll get to that in a minute. Um, I got this book um, when I was at Barnes and Noble the Fantastic Fungi and have a flip through of it. And I started a page. Um, I really want to do one of the pages with my, uh, these are old. I've had these for a long time. Chroma blends, the neon, neon watercolors. I use them in my other crafts for like journaling and other things, but I think it'd be so cool to do a mushroom page with this. Maybe not all, like I mix it with some other stuff, but I am doing a Enchanted Forest uh, page with that right now, so hopefully you'll see that in my in my completed pages. Now, what I wanted to say is, when I was at Barnes and Noble, and I don't go that often, but I did 
go. I like to support bookstores, even though this would be cheaper on Amazon. But if we don't support them, like we won't have any bookstores, you know, as it is, we barely have. So I got another copy while I was there um, of Enchanted Forest because my copy, I was looking at this and I feel like the paper here is thicker than what than my um, Enchanted Forest. Let me show you. So, um, I don't know. I feel like this this paper. Yeah, it feels thinner. My my copy feels a little thinner. This one seems. Yeah, it looks. I don't know. I feel like it's thicker paper. So I got that because I said, you know what? I don't know if they're gonna keep making them with this thick paper. So if I find a copy, and this is like my favorite book. So I, I, I got another copy. That way I won't feel bad when I finish this. Hopefully I'll finish this because if I am if I finish a book at one point in my life, it's probably going to be this because I have the most colored pages in this. So um, I won't feel bad about it. And then I started this, you know, a long time ago. So it'll. I'm glad that I have another copy. I'm not the kind of person that will get second copies for a lot of things, but... I made an exception for this because it's my favorite book and it has like sentimental value. <laughs> okay, I wanted to show you something really interesting or fun that I do share with you something that I do that I've been starting to do uh, recently and that is um, when I'm kind of like tired and you have no energy to color. Um, I got these at Daiso, these little stickies. And I got some more of these. What I do is I take like a stack of coloring books and, you know, to my bed, you know, right before bedtime or if I don't have energy to color and I just want to lie down. Instead of scrolling on Instagram, I take some books and I will look, flip through the pages and see which pages I kind of want to color and if any ideas jump at me. You know what I mean? So like, for and then I'll write it, I'll write it on the post-it and then... When I come back to it, you know, I can kind of start on it. So, like, I wrote gel crayon background, the clocks in the Calero Metallic, and ink tents and neo color on the crocodile. That was, like, my plan. So, it's, like, coloring plans of what you're going to use. And that way, you don't forget, you know, like, you don't forget, like, your, your plan. So, I did a bunch of those. Hold on, I'll show you. See? If you see these little um, stickies... And I already did that once um, I, in my Winter Wonderland, and I actually completed a lot of pages like that. So I saved them to show you, but I could have thrown these away because I already started a lot of the pages. of. So I did that in here, and I would write, like, okay, I'm going to do the background in this, blah, 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 and I actually did it. You know, you start on it with, with whatever, and it just helps you kind of – because I forget, like, when I – if I have an idea, when I look at a page, I'll forget – so this way, I'll show you. I don't want to show you my completed page. Yet. See that? So if I have ideas, let's see, I'll write it down and then on the sticky note. See? So it helps. You can come and do part of a page and, you know. So I wanted to show you that. And maybe you could try it. I think it's a great, like, way to go, go about it. Um... I wanted to show you that I got a new copy of this one. So this is a book that I saw on Dual Robots channel and I got a used copy and then I got a refund on it because it had so many colored pages, like everything was scribbled on with a kid. And at first I was like, you know what? No problem, I'll cover it up. But I realized, you know what? It's just too many colored pages to sell me a book like that. And yeah, there are a lot, but I ripped some out and I said, you know, why am I ripping it out? Let me just get another one, you know. Now I did, uh, the ones that are in here I are still, there are some colored pages, but I removed so many from here. And I did start a page. Where is it? So I'm going to have to give up on that because I'm going to toss this copy. That's okay. You can always redo it. I started it to cover the green. See how there's like a little green under the brown? So I ended up getting another copy that is not as colored because I really like the trees. So, 
And, it, and even though there are some colored pages, like right here, it's not bad. Like I can continue that, you know? So I did get this used, but this didn't have like scribbles from a child, you know, like all over it, you know? So here's another colored page and that's about it. There's like two colored pages in here. So I can work with that. So I got another copy of that. Okay, another thing I wanted to uh, mention is somebody asked me in the comments about how I cover the hidden objects, the annoying hidden objects in my mythographic pages. He like commented on my mythographic uh, video and I wrote him that I'll show him in one of my updates. But basically I told him, I don't cover them up. It's just too much work. It's, you can't really cover it up with anything that, you know, won't show when you, like acrylic doesn't work, you know, it's plastic. How are you gonna do colored pencil on top of plastic, you know? You, you can't really use other mediums on a plastic uh, finish, which is, you know, gel pen and, and acrylic, it's kind of like a plasticky finish. So I just color them. So I wanted to show him that I actually color them. He said, how do you do it? You don't even notice. Well, I color them. See, that's the annoying little, whatever it is, rubber ducky. Um, here's a, a little bolt in the middle. <laughs> I just color it with a gel pen. Here's a little uh, cone that you they put in the construction. A tooth, oh, I didn't color the toothbrush. That's something I forgot. I'll have to color that. But yeah, but basically I color them. See, here's the Lego, little piece of Lego. So that's how I deal with it. Uh, here's the scissors. I just color it and then you don't even really notice it that much. You know what I mean? So I promised him I would show, see if I have any other examples. The start, there's a little pacifier, a bell, that's his gel pen, a little peanut, fish bowl, a little pendant. So yeah, I just color the annoying objects and that way I don't make it an issue. So yeah, that's what I wanted to show. Here's the Matryoshka doll, the flag, yarn, a little present a button so that's how I deal with the um, hidden objects and have a lot of other pages and all of them I colored the annoying objects I just colored them and then you don't really notice see there's a little cherry like whatever so that's for you my dear viewer who asked me and I wanted to mention something also that he didn't ask me but I'll mention it a lot of people are very intimidated how to tackle the, the mythographic pages. So my advice is what I do is start with the background. Take a very light pastel color, you know, either alcohol or whatever, and do the whole background. That's, you know, do the background first. And then, like I started here with the blue first. This one I ended up using a lot of alcohol marker sort of these but the way that you really start with them to kind of distinguish is start with the background like the blue I did the blue first um I'm trying to see like that's not one but basically that's the best way to tackle them because when you start with the background all the forefront objects will pop out more so um take a little marker and do the or whatever watercolor pencil do the background first and also it's the same with the stephanie law the stephanie law books that are very busy Let's see if i can find it um oh here yeah secret worlds you start with the background see here i took it's a, they're very busy pages these as you can see so here I did most of it in pencil and other things, but if you see here, I just started with the background. I took like a, oops, like a goldish yellow. I did all the background, and then on top of the goldish yellow, I added pencil, other colors on top. But once I did the background, everything became much more clear, like what it separates the foreground from the background. So that's my advice with these pages as well you know, is to start with the background. See how I did that there? And then it brings the other objects forward. So that's how you should tackle a mythographic book. That's my advice. 
You don't have to use alcohol marker. You can use something else. But yeah, start with the background and then go to the bigger objects, you know, the, the biggest ones and then the smaller ones. We'll leave the smaller ones last. So that's my advice on that. I wanted to share. Oh, I wanted to tell you, this is my um, coloring, uh, one of my coloring notebooks. Uh, a lot of you asked me about the Artex pencils. When I uh, filmed that haul, I had already returned the Artex pencils. So don't worry, a lot of you were angry and you said, no, return them, you know, that you didn't want me to get screwed. I didn't, I returned them. I had returned them already, so uh, those were duds. And just yesterday I saw a video of a lovely colorist that I just discovered, Inksmith, and she was saying how soft and wonderful the Artex pencils are. She recommends them, they're soft core and wonderful. So definitely mine were not soft. So I did return those. Hopefully I'll try again. Maybe I'll try again buying them and I'll get better luck to get the good batch. But I don't know. We'll see. So, but I did return those pencils. So don't worry. Okay. Last thing I wanted to show you is my basket of whips. This is a new system that I'm using. And here is a basket of all my ongoing whips, which are a lot. I have more, but, and then when I, it sits near my desk, like here's my desk. So I just pull out whips from here and kind of finish them off. So that has helped me a lot. I'm sure you guys all keep your whips in like a separate like area. Um, yeah, and that's it. So that's all I wanted to say. Um, I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you in the next video. Bye everyone.